Hello everyone. So I am recording this lecture purely with the idea that you have covered up your syllabus so that I can help you to revise your concepts. Also, I can touch upon the few important areas. Okay. So first of all, if I'll give you an idea, so the full syllabus is divided into four parts. Okay. Oh, let me change it a little bit. So it starts with the foundation. Then we have quants. Then we have FMP. And the last one is the valuation. So first of all, if I'll start with uh, listing out the important topics, important chapters in our syllabus. So. from the foundation the important chapters will be capm apt financial disasters theories and garp code of conduct clear from these two you can expect on an average okay this is just i am giving uh, what i personally feel okay that uh, how many questions can come from which area which domain okay so uh, from this you can expect six questions and from this you can expect minimum four questions so on an average you got the idea about at 10 questions from this area now when it comes to the quants probability very important topics then hypothesis testing and regression they will cover the major portion towards the exam okay so you can expect approx 9 to 10 questions from these three areas clear now when it comes to the valuation first three chapters which are related to war first three chapters which are related to war they will cover on an average six questions on an average six questions will be there from this area and then the last three topic that is the binomial tree binomial tree then we have the black scholes martin model bsm and the last is the greeks they all together when combined will give you total on an average six questions clear now let us come to the third book that is fmp so in fmp which chapters are very important clear so i am just discussing only the important area over here the futures okay uh, i am writing it over here for the fmp okay it start with the future and hedging future and hedging you can expect two questions from this area foreign exchange minimum two question maximum you can even expect three question from this area as well commodity one or two then trading strategies write down then options part of options okay which includes properties trading strategy and exotic options out of which trading strategy and exotic options are the important so i am just covering these two will cover your approximately four questions clear then the domain of interest rate will take two questions clear then corporate bonds corporate bonds mortgage backed securities and swap will take on an average four questions clear so over here 3 to 5 6 7 7, 7 and 10 17 questions so over 17 over here we have 10 27 27 and 10 37 and to 39 49 so approximately i have given you the hint of 50 questions from where you can expect in the exam clear now in the exam you will see that most of the questions most of the questions are going to be theoretical in nature most of the question they are going to test your theory theoretical knowledge clear and some of the questions are going to be practical calculation based practical 
calculation based means simply the details will be given to you you have to put up that in the formula and you need to find out the value clear if simply i'll give you an example they will ask you tell me what is the power rate they will give you the spot rate they will give you the interest rate they will give you the time you simply need to find out the forward amount clear so this is how our exam will be structured now you will be having 240 minutes for the exam and in which you have to complete 100 questions 240 minutes in which you have to complete 100 questions so try to target 2 minutes per question try to target 2 minutes per question so make sure that make sure that every hour every hour you will at least finish 30 questions now there will be 30 minutes to 40 minutes left in your hand but trust me this is not actually the left why because there are 10 to 15 questions which will take your extra time like 3 minutes 4 minutes or even 5 minutes clear so this strategy is for those 80 to 90 questions where you should not spend much time more than that 2 minutes why because that extra time you need to use that in your 10 to 15 question which are very lengthy might be the theoretical lengthy or might be the practically they are lengthy so try to average out your time in such a way that you will be able to give the time equally on each question now the most important strategy see in the exams there are 100 questions and out of 100 question trust me 10 to 15 questions are going to be very very difficult very very difficult kind of situation where and this difficulty is not only for you these 10 to 15 questions are difficult for each and every student okay one out of 100 i am not talking about but yes for 99 students these 10 to 15 questions are very difficult and they are going to mark them randomly they are going to mark them randomly clear so if you are going to mark it randomly trust me even if you are going to take 1 minute or even if you are going to take 10 minutes or even if you are going to take 10 seconds the randomness will remain the same okay the probability that you are making them right is just 25% is just 25% because if you don't know anything about that question you you feel that you haven't studied that question you did not know the concepts so whether you will take 5 minutes 50 minutes or 5 hours it will remain the same so it's better i should not utilize much of my time over there and i'll carry forward that time to the next question which i can really correct which i can really correct so make sure that these 10 to 15 questions are there to make you fail to make you fail and over here over here you have to show some amount of smartness over here you have to show some amount of start uh, smartness that sir out of 100 questions 10 questions are there to take most of my time so that so that i will lose my confidence i will lose my time and i will not be able to perform well in those 90 where i can pass which are easy and moderate level type of question these 90 are more than enough to make you pass but you are stuck in that 10 that you are not able to concentrate on that that 90 so my always my personal guidance to all our students to all those who are preparing for frm exam focus on that 90 which can make you pass if there are 10 questions which you are not getting any clue jump over it no issues but do these 90 perfectly well clear apart from that one more guidance is the method of elimination method of elimination suppose if there is a question in front of you and you are unable to decide that whether to choose a b c or d clear but you know little bit amount of concepts but you are not sure about it clear so based on your concepts try to think that whether a is correct or not if a is not correct eliminate it clear again you will think that okay c is also something which is not suiting with the concept based on your knowledge then you are left with only b and d clear now over here you have to use your instinct 
because they two seem similar they two seems correct to you but out of them only one is correct so over here you have to use your in instinct so at least your probability to tick the correct is now 50% earlier which was only 25% so in the frm exam you will see that you are using this method of elimination in many questions in many questions you are going to use this method of elimination clear next don't feel nervous during the exam one of the biggest enemy i have seen many students they have prepared well they have practiced questions but during the exam they are bit nervous so try to improve on it okay it is not going to take anything from you just give your best perform best recollect whatever you have studied during the exam so that you can take the right answer because if you will start getting nervous it will take you towards the wrong direction and even if you are knowing the right answer you will tick wrong options because you are nervous because you are in hurry and never hurry in your exam 240 minutes is more than enough to do 100 questions really trust me it's more than enough to complete 100 questions okay so i start with the revision this formula is very important for the exam okay might be you will not get a numerical from this perspective but yes they can ask you what is rare of that is risk adjusted return on capital so this return on capital is on economic capital is on economic capital what are its four uses or you can say what are its four practical application it starts with the business comparison write down number one business comparison then investment analysis business comparison means which business is performing better investment analysis means where you should invest your money which is giving you highest rare of clear pricing strategy and the last one is the risk management now the next point of discussion is that what are the learnings from 2007 and 9 financial crisis so the first point is that while we are taking the decision for the business we need to consider the needs of each and every stakeholders each and every stakeholders second the board of members they need to be competent as well as they must have independent directors they need to be competent means at least they have the knowledge of the business first point knowledge of the business second the knowledge of the risk management is also very important clear competent as well as independent directors then they will be taking a highly proactive roles highly proactive roles in the firms risk management means they are coming forward they are coming forward to actually take the steps to manage the risk to identify the risk clear to take the steps to actually reduce the risk to minimize the risk or to eliminate the risk which risk we should take which risk we should uh, we should not take everything need to be discussed at the top management so in that the board member should be very proactive clear firm risk appetite must be circulated among every member of the board means they need to know that this is our risk appetite we should not take risk beyond that level if we will take and if anything will go wrong we are going to lose everything we are going to lose everything and the last part is the compensation compensation must be aligned to the behavior okay but not to the profitability once it is attached to the profitability the more you will take risk the more higher chances of profit so the management is going to work towards the profitability rather than the sustainability clear so sustainability is very important factor over here also there will must be a firewall between the ceo and the board members because if either if they are same or if they are having a, a good relationship then they can take the mutual decisions but we don't want it to be mutual decision we want them to be independent we want them to take the decision in the favor of the stakeholders we want them to take the decision in the favor of the stakeholders next the question is who will hold the responsibility of the enterprise level risk management the board of directors will hold the responsibility they will be accountable for the enterprise level risk management enterprise means the organization as a whole clear but now suppose if there is a situation that in the board members there is no one that much expertise of having that risk management knowledge then what they will do 
दे हैव टू हायर अ रिस्क एडवाइजरी डायरेक्टर रिस्क एडवाइजरी डायरेक्टर एंड दिस डायरेक्टर इज गोइंग टू बी इंडिपेंडेंट नाउ ऑल द रिस्क मैनेजमेंट डिसीजन विल बी टेकन बाय हिम और देर विल बी अ सेपरेट रिस्क मैनेजमेंट कमिटी नाउ इफ यू आर डिसाइडिंग अपॉन द फॉर्म्स रिस्क एपेटाइट देन इट मस्ट सूट विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड द गोल ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इफ सपोज आई एम अ बैंक एंड आई हैव टू गिव अ लोन टू मुकेश अंबानी एंड आई पर्सनली फील दैट दिस लोन इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी रिस्की फॉर माई ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन दैट सिचुएशन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव दैट लोन क्लियर अगेन the compensation should not be related to the profitability directly yes you can relate it to the profitability but risk adjusted profits risk adjusted profits if higher the risk higher the risk then your profitability risk adjusted profitability will reduce and hence the compensation will also reduce so the management over here we need to decide that if they will take higher risk there is a loss of the trust of all the stakeholders they will lose their money they will lose their capital so they need to take a mutual decision considering the stakeholders of the organization see the decision will be taken at the top level but at the end it will be implemented by combining each and every one whether senior management business unit finance operation functions risk management team they all are going to work together to implement those final frameworks which have been decided at the board of directors level or cro's level or ceo's level clear next we have a audit committee which is a sub committee of the full board then what is the responsibility they are actually going to check that whether the organization is actually following all the rules accounting policies accounting standards or not clear also they have a role to play in the supervision of the risk management policies then uh, understanding of credit default swap is very important there what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages so when it comes to the advantage it's a spur innovation cash flow potential risk price discovery these are the three advantages when it comes to the disadvantages historically weak regulations false sense of securities clear uh so better you can take the note of this as well that uh, the concept of cds is very important now you can just uh, tip the points of the advantages and the disadvantage write down point number 1 spur innovation okay then second cash flow potential and the third is the price risk price discovery these are the advantages then what are the disadvantage weak regulation in the cds clear then false sense of security why i am saying the weak regulation and false sense of security because in 2007 and 8 we have seen that even after i bought the cds i suffered the loss why because from the whom i have bought the cds that company also defaulted then how will i get the money okay so there is a double loss double loss how come the money i have given to facebook okay in the form of loan clear One thousand dollars, clear. But I doubted that Facebook will default. I purchased the CDS from J.P. Morgan by paying hundred dollars, and they both defaulted. So now, what is the amount of loss? Eleven hundred dollars, clear. So it's a false sense of security by looking at the historical records that even after I bought the CDS, I made a huge amount of loss, clear. Then you need to have the good understanding of cdos okay that is collateralized debt obligation clear mortgage back securities there will be a dedicated chapter on these so don't worry about that okay cmos that is collateralized mortgage obligations clear cdo square cdo square so i'm just uh, putting up these terms in front of you so that you can recollect the meaning of these terms because if i start explaining these terms again it will take huge time and it will again become a syllabus so this is more importantly a type of a revisionary video where i will pick up few points and give you the hint that these are the area which are key and important for our syllabus clear now the next point is about the mitigation of the credit risk you can write this down as well notes short notes mitigating 
credit risk so the first thing you can purchase a insurance which is a cds is like an insurance you can do netting netting will reduce the amount of exposure clear then mark to market mark to market so that there will be no piled up of the amount which you have to take so this will reduce your exposure this will reduce exposure clear then collateral collateral will reduce the amount of credit risk because if mr b will default you can sell the collateral and recover your amount close if anyone will terminate the contract in between then what are the rules what are the policies how you are actually going to terminate how you will set off your amount settlement all these things clear and reassignment clear if mr a is leaving the contract and mr c is coming in place then how things will work and then uh, that uh, securitization process that how bank are actually using their asset and selling it to the spv by issuing the securities so originate to distribute model otd model originate to distribute model very important clear now coming to the modern portfolio theory modern portfolio theory over here capm you can expect its assumption or you can ask to calculate the expected return from the asset they will provide you rf they will provide you rm they will provide you the value of the beta clear so this is how you can calculate the value of the capm then efficient frontier you remember efficient frontier somewhat like this so this part is the minimum variance portfolio minimum variance portfolio and this part this part is your efficient frontier this part this green part is your efficient frontier and this part is your minimum variance portfolio because you see that at this level your amount of standard deviation this is the standard deviation and this one is the return so your standard deviation is the least at this point clear so now uh, till now we are discussing only about the risky portfolio risky portfolio because you see that there is a risk in this you cannot define any portfolio which is risk free because risk free portfolio will lie on the y axis clear so we now going to combine this efficient portfolio this is my efficient portfolio i am going to combine it with the risk free asset i am going to combine it with the risk free asset and that portfolio this portfolio will be your best portfolio this portfolio is going to be your best portfolio from risk and return perspective risk and return perspective means this is the point where your return per amount of risk is the highest where your return per amount of risk is the highest and this line this particular line is known as capital market line capital market line your capital market line will includes will include rf and risky asset risky asset and over here the investors all the investors will have the homogeneous expectation they have the same amount of risk and return expectation same amount of risk and return expectations clear homogeneous expectation about the return as well as the standard deviation so if everyone will have the same rf same risky asset and they have the same expectation then there is going to be a single cml line so there is going to be write down single single cml line and the point of tangency of the cml and the efficient frontier is known as the market portfolio market portfolio in which everyone is investing in which everyone is investing clear no one is going to take uh, portfolio which is below the best portfolio no one is going to take the portfolio above the best portfolio because if you move ahead 
okay there will be huge amount of risk if you move below there will be a lower return per amount of risk so this market portfolio is the best portfolio and mark my word they are discussing about the all risky assets all risky assets in the world when you are talking about the assets it includes the bonds it includes the equity it includes the alternative investments clear it include currencies commodities everything so cml is about all asset they have used the word all assets clear if in the exam they will make you confused by word equity don't get yourself confused cml is about all assets apart from that there is one more understanding that if this is my efficient frontier and this is my say line and this is the point of tangency at this level he is investing at rf he is investing at rf and at this level he is borrowing at rf clear investing at rf means what is the meaning of investing at rf you have 100 dollars out of that 40 dollars you are putting at rf 60 dollars you are investing in the market but at this point say at this point you have 100 dollars you are putting that in the market clear you borrowing 60 dollars from the market at rf and you are investing that in the market so how much you have invested in the market total 160 out of which 100 belongs to you and 60 belongs to the rf next you can uh, write down what is the equation for the cml line okay write down the equation for the cml line if you are making this uh, rough notes from this uh, revision lectures na it will become easy for you to revise at least important topics from uh, the exam perspective right don't rf plus expected return of the market minus rf whole divided by the standard deviation of the market multiplied with the standard deviation of the portfolio so cml slope is sharp ratio cml slope is going to be the sharp ratio clear next we have the concept of capm so if i'll start with its assumption okay that the securities are indivisible okay frictions less frictionless markets are there no taxes no transaction cost no commissions will be there fractions investments are possible there will be perfect competition homogeneous expectations clear then market participants can borrow and lend at rf okay and investors will make their decision based on the expected return and variance these are the few points which comes under the assumptions of the capm clear then we can calculate the beta beta is covariance of x and y divided by divided by sigma square of y covariance of x and y divided by the sigma square of y or you can do it with the help of the correlation with the help of the correlation with sigma of x multiplied divided by the sigma of y clear you can calculate the beta either with the help of the covariance or with the help of the correlation next is the sml line sml line okay that is security market line at it and it involves the beta and it is associated with capm concepts clear so if there if anyone will ask you the difference between sml and cml capital market line that it is going to be associated with the standard deviation or you can say sharp ratio clear but sml is associated with the beta and it comes from the concept of capm so now over here the concept is different okay the line is same okay this is the sml line clear now this line is talking about the beta clear and if the beta is zero if the beta is zero beta is what beta is the systematic risk beta is the systematic risk and in the capm we know that there is no unsystematic risk so the only possible risk in the market is systematic risk and if the risk is zero then if risk is zero then your return is risk free clear and as you are increasing the beta as you are increasing the systematic risk your return is also increasing clear your return is also increasing clear this one is your return and this one is your beta that is systematic risk clear in case of cml this one was sigma that is your standard deviation which includes both systematic as well as 
unsystematic risk clear that is the difference over here now in the exam they can play uh, games with you on the concept of undervalued undervalued and overvalued the securities which are undervalued and overvalued so what is overvalued securities whose re that is required rate of return is greater than the expected return which are undervalued stock whose expected return is greater than the required rate of return clear see this is coming from the current price current price of the share this is coming from the current price of the share if the current price of the share is high if the current price of the share is high then return is low try to understand if the current price of the share is high if the current price of the share is high then return is going to be low but if the current price of the share is low if the current price of the share is low then potential return potential return is going to be very high. so the overvalued securities overvalued securities will float below the security market line and undervalued securities will plot above the security market line clear this much is good for the understanding and trust me now you will not get yourself confused between cml as well as sml now when it comes to the performance measure when it comes to the performance measure you have sharp ratio sharp ratio then you have trinior ratio trinior ratio and you have jensen performance index performance index clear now sharp ratio we already know that expected return of the portfolio minus rf divided by the sigma of the portfolio clear what is trinior index everything is same sigma of the portfolio will be replaced by the beta of the portfolio beta of the portfolio and this uh, jensen okay it follows the concept of expected return of the portfolio minus expected return of the portfolio minus the formula of capm that is rf plus rm minus rf multiplied with the beta clear this part is full capm clear what is how much a portfolio is generating for you and what is the expected return from the price of the asset clear that is your alpha alpha means the additional returns which you are generating above the capm additional return which you are generating above the capm based on your skills based on your knowledge then additionally we have tracking error that is the active risk we have information ratio information ratio which is active return divided by active risk then we have sortino ratio sortino ratio sortino ratio means rp minus r minimum what is the minimum required rate of return and what is your return of the portfolio divided by downside deviation downside deviation clear you focus only on the downside deviation okay so till now i have covered the concept of the capm now let us move ahead is the multi factor model okay that is your apt that is arbitrage pricing theory and multi factor models now what is the need of this multi factor model see uh, till now we have done that capm it is based on one single factor clear that is the market it only assumes that there is only one single factor that is market and the market which includes all the assets of the world now this is something which is next to impossible because you are not able to find out a single index which will give you the return expected return of the all the asset in the world not possible clear so capm is not practically possible then in order to counter this we'll come up with the different models okay one model is uh, pharma french model okay then we can use uh, macro economic factor models where we will find out the expected return of the asset based on the factors like gdp growth rate inflation interest rates currency rates we will find out that what will be the change in these factors and that change how much that change will impact the expected return of that particular asset 
so now whenever i talk about the apt that is arbitrage pricing theory or arbitrage pricing model capm is only considering one single factor that is the market but apt is a multi factor model which includes multiple indices like you can include sap 500 you can include nasdaq okay you can include dow jones you can include nifty 50 these are the indices but apart from the indices you can also include the multi factor uh, macro factors like gdp inflation exchange rate oil prices whatever factors which are impacting the price of that particular security the return of that particular security clear so how i write the equation for this it is going to be expected return expected return of that particular stock but i am going to add few of the factors factor 1 beta 1 factor 1 beta 2 factor 2 beta 3 factor 3 and so on clear so beta n factor n plus the error term clear i am arranging that equation and i am saying that there are many factors which are impacting the return of this particular asset which are impacting the return of this particular asset clear and for each factor i'll find out the beta beta is the sensitivity to the factor what is beta it is the sir sensitivity to the factors now even in the apt there are uh, some assumptions number 1 that every participant is looking to maximize their profit this is the first assumption second the markets are frictionless means there is no transaction cost there is no taxes there is uh, no lack of short selling means everyone can short sell clear and there is no arbitrage opportunity and if there is any arbitrage opportunity that will be quickly exploited by the market participant these are the three assumptions as compared to the capm there are many assumptions but apt have only these three assumptions then we have a roll and ross model roll and ross model they have suggested uh, some of the factors okay what are those factors which are suggested by them one is the yield curve one is the yield curve they suggested to take the difference between the short term rates and the long term rates that will give you the hint about the growth in the economy that will give you the hint about how the economy is going to perform then what is the expected inflation expected inflation versus unexpected inflation clear expected inflation and unexpected inflation the production of the industry production of the industry and the fourth is the fourth is the spread spread between a uh, risky bond and least risky bonds clear spread between the risky bonds and least risky bond specifically for the corporate bonds clear because there are uh, for the t bills there is no spread they are risk free clear so roll and ross suggested four factors yield curve that is the difference between the long term interest rate short term interest rate difference between the expected inflation and unexpected inflation industrial production difference between the spread of the risky bond and the least risky corporate bond now then we have the next topic that is the principles of effective data aggregation and risk reporting trust me the chapter is fully theoretical in nature and it's very difficult to remember each and every point okay so if one or two questions okay if will come from this particular area you can mark them based on your instinct as well as the knowledge which you have gained throughout the journey of your frm preparation okay now the next important topic is that financial disasters theory out of which the they will not ask you the theory basically they will not ask you to write down the theory they will understand basically that what are the reasons of their fall okay what makes them actually getting into the bankruptcy position this is what they want to know out of which i'll make sure that i'll write down few of the important uh, stories okay one is the layman brother layman brothers then uh, yes mgrm mgrm 
that is metal gesture shaft refining and marketing this is a uh, important one okay northern rock northern rock this is also a uh, important one also uh, it is divided that uh, which companies failed because of the management which companies failed because of the model risk clear which companies uh, failed because of the interest rate risk or liquidity risk that is also very important to remember clear the the companies which failed because of uh, the rock trading which are those companies okay so when it comes to the model risk number one problem means i am talking about the problem it involves that you are using the wrong model for the estimation or you are unable to specify the right things for the model data might be incomplete your estimations are wrong okay means uh, if i talk about the estimators of normal distribution it is mean and standard deviation okay if i talk about the poisson distribution lambda is the estimator so your estimators are wrong clear or your assumption with respect to model is also incorrect clear the next one is the the london whale trade the london whale trade okay then bearing banks bearings bank okay they suffered because of that rock trading and the last you can take these enron and swift case clear but yes these five are very important from the examination perspective then one question will come from the car code of conduct uh, just a very small topic so you can give a thorough reading towards it and it's over for you okay okay so we have completed the revision of this uh, first book that is foundation important stuff i have covered up i have given you the importance from all the subjects important formulas are also taken care of so this 40 to 45 minutes will definitely help you with the thorough understanding at least will help you to revise the basic theory of the topics clear so i am ending this lecture here thank you